Hello everyone, I am Jerry, and this right here is the brand new Pro Level MacBook Pro. No, that's not right. Actually, this is the brand new 14 inch MacBook Pro. And yes, Apple has finally released their second generation of Pro Mac level chips. So we finally get to be able to take a look at them and see them and compare them against the previous generation. So we're gonna take a look at this M2 Max MacBook Pro and compare it against the M1 Max MacBook Pro and see if there's any differences between these two laptops, compare the performance and figure out if you should upgrade. Both of them are specced with the low end Max chip in a previous video, I called them Baby Max. I don't know if that's a thing or not. Either way, the M1 Max version over here comes with a 10 core processor and a 24 core GPU. It also has 32 gigabytes of memory and a one terabyte SSD. The M2 Max over here comes with a 12 core CPU, 30 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of memory, and a two terabyte SSD. Starting with the outside of these machines, you're really going to be hard pressed to see any difference between them. They look the exact same, and that's because Apple redesigned the 14 inch MacBook Pro back in 2021. And so this one is just kind of a spec upgrade. So on the left side of both of these laptops, you're going to see two Thunderbolt 4 ports for up to 40 gigabits per second of transfer speed. You get a MagSafe port for charging up to 96 watts, and you get a high impedance headphone jack. On the right side, you get an HDMI port, you get another Thunderbolt 4 port, and you do get an SD card slot. Now, the only difference in the ports between these two computers is that the M2 Max actually has advanced HDMI, as Apple calls it, and it seems to be more like HDMI 2.1. So both of these machines can connect up to four external displays, but the M2 Max can connect up to an 8K display through HDMI. The keyboard and trackpad on the new M2 MacBook Pros are exactly the same as the M1 Pros. There's no change at all to the keyboard or trackpad, and that's not a bad thing. I actually love the Magic Keyboards on all of Apple's devices, so whether you're typing on a laptop or the iPad Magic Keyboard or the desktop Magic Keyboard, they all feel exactly the same. Both of these laptops come with the same 14.2 inch Liquid Retina XDR display, which was released with this guy back in 2021. And it is such a good display. The new version has everything that you expect. So it's got up to 500 nits in regular brightness. It's got up to 1000 nits in sustained HDR and up to 1600 nits peak for HDR. These laptops also have about 8,000 mini LEDs behind the panels to give you the perfect contrast between black blacks and white whites. They both have the adaptive refresh rate up to 120 hertz, Apple calls that ProMotion. They both have P3 wide color gamut support and they both have True Tone built into the display. Honestly, Apple doesn't make a better display in my opinion. So this is the audio and video test using the built-in web cameras and microphones in the M2 Max MacBook Pro and the M1 Max MacBook Pro. And I wanted to see if there was any difference because in a previous video, I saw a pretty drastic difference between the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 Pro MacBook Pro. There was a stark difference and a lot of grain in the M2 MacBook Air compared to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So in these Max versions of these laptops, I'm really not seeing any difference. The color, the brightness, everything looks good. I don't see more distortion or more grain in one over the other. I mean, they're webcams. There is a 1080p camera up top and there is a three mic array in both of these. Apple calls them studio microphones. So how do they look? How do they sound? Now I did see in another video that somebody perceived a difference between the speakers of the 16 inch M1 MacBook and the 16 inch M2 MacBook. And so I decided to do a speaker test on these as well. But to my ear, I really did not hear any difference. They both sounded the exact same to me. They both sounded like the same amount of volume. They both had the same range to my ears. But what do you think? So what did you think? Was there a difference between the two speakers? Let me know below. Now, the only other differences between these two computers before we get to the performance is going to be the wireless technology and battery. Apple says you can get up to another hour of battery with the M2 Max chips inside. And either way, I have not experienced any issues with battery since the Apple Silicon chips started shipping. So no issues with the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, the regular M1s, I get through a full day. 
The new M2 MacBook Pros also got an upgrade to their Wi-Fi, so they now support Wi-Fi 6E, so if you have a router that is Wi-Fi 6E capable, you may get higher speeds. In my testing between these two, I didn't see any real difference. But you also get Bluetooth 5.3 in this version compared to Bluetooth 5, and again, you're gonna need other Bluetooth 5.3 devices for that to matter. Next, we're going to look at the performance between these two machines. And right before we get to that, I wanna look at this magic stand case from CaseCoo, and CaseCoo is sponsoring this video. This is a beautifully designed case for the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. The case looks great and also provides plenty of protection for the front glass and the rear cameras. The secret to the Magic Stand case is the hidden stand built right into the ring in the back. This stand can hold your iPhone up between 40 and 120 degrees to get the perfect angle for watching video or having a FaceTime call. There's also 48 magnets in the ring, which allow the Magic Stand to work with all of your MagSafe chargers and accessories. Check out the link and discount code in the description below to save 10% on your Magic Stand case. Okay, so now we can take a look at the performance between the M1 Max and the M2 Max, starting with Cinebench. So starting with the single core results, the M1 Max got a score of 1529 and the M2 Max got a score of 1630. Now that's a pretty modest increase of about 6.5%. However, when you start to look at the multi-core, the M1 Max got a score of 12,336, whereas the M2 Max got a score of 14,780. That's actually a 20% increase. And that mostly makes sense because this has a 10-core CPU and this has a 12-core CPU. 20% of 10 is two, so. Now I did see one difference when it comes to the Cinebench testing, and that was the fans. The fans actually kicked on faster on the M2 Max than it did on the M1 Max, and consistently revved up higher than the M1 Max version. I checked the temperatures around the top of the casing on both devices, and they were both between 38 and 40 degrees Celsius, but the fans definitely were more audible on the M2 Max than the M1 Max. Now to look at the graphics between these two computers, I used GFX Bench and did the 4K Aztec Ruins off-screen test so it does a 4K test on both displays. The 24-core GPU in the M1 Max got a score of 107 frames per second, whereas the M2 Max with its 30-core GPU got a score of 134 frames per second, which is a 25% increase, which again, 25% of 24 is six, so 24 cores, 30. It seems these processors actually scale pretty well. Now, SSD speeds seem to be a hot topic lately, and I think it's a bit overblown, but also a little weird at the same time. Now, I have the one terabyte drive in the M1 Max, and I have the two terabyte drive in the M2 Max, and here I do see some differences in the speeds. However, it's in numbers that really don't matter. Overall, the M2 Max with its two terabyte drive was getting a slower read speed, but a higher write speed, compared to the one terabyte in the M1 Max. Now really, anything over six gigabytes really is not gonna matter for basically every workflow. Now putting all of that together with my Final Cut Pro test, which I use to benchmark all of these computers, I use an old iPhone 12 video that has a heavy color grade on it just to make it a little bit more difficult. And the M1 Max completed this test in three minutes and 48 seconds. Now the M2 Max completed the same test in three minutes and 46 seconds. Two seconds. They completed it two seconds faster. Why is that? Both of these laptops have two media encode engines built in that can encode and decode H.264 and 265 and ProRes and all that stuff. And I exported these videos in H.264. So using the built-in media coders, there's not a lot of difference between the media coders in these two chips. But when you compare these against something like the M2 Pro, you'll see that it's about twice as fast, and that's because the M2 Pro only has a single media engine. So when you sum up all of that, the difference really between the base model M1 Max and the base model M2 Max is up to 20, 25%, but that all depends on your workflow. You may not see much of a difference at all, like in my Final Cut Pro export, but if you're doing highly graphic intensive work, you might see a pretty decent gain. So how much does a 14 inch M1 Baby Max set you back? Well, this configuration actually starts at $3,099. And I'm pretty sure that's what I paid for this guy as well. Actually, now that I think about it, I actually probably paid more than that because I think the base M1 Max came with 512 gigs of storage. Correct me if I'm wrong. However, I did actually upgrade the SSD in the M2 Max to a two terabyte version. So that comes out to an eye-watering $3,499. But anyway, if you're eyeing one of those M2 Max computers because you recently, or even a year ago or more, got one of the M1 Max chips and you want to upgrade, I can tell you, you're 
going to be wasting your money. I would not do it. I would definitely not upgrade to the M2 Max from the M1 Max unless you have a really specific need. Like you do blender testing. Have you seen those blender test results? They're pretty impressive. Other than that, for most people, for most things, for most professional work, you're not gonna see a huge difference between these two devices. Now, one exception is if you made a mistake on what you ordered with the M1 Max version, like I did. So this is the 24 core GPU, 10 core CPU, 32 gigs of memory, and one terabyte of SSD. The one issue I have with this computer is the SSD size. I can actually go through a terabyte pretty quickly because I like to use my internal drive in these devices for most of my production work. And when I'm done, I archive it off onto my NAS and, and move on. But sometimes I am limited by that one terabyte storage internally. And yes, you can get an external SSD like this Sabre Rocket. This is a four terabyte NVMe drive that I have in a USB 4 enclosure. And this thing is screaming fast. I can get 2,500 megabytes per second read and write on this drive. So that is a really good option if you don't wanna pay Apple prices for SSD storage. But for me and the convenience of having the built-in internal storage, I wanted to get two terabytes. So that's why I ordered this M2 Max machine. I don't need those extra six GPU cores. Those extra CPU cores are nice, I guess, but I don't see any benefit in my workflow in what I do. But I will see the benefit in that two terabyte drive. Now for anyone else who's upgrading from an older laptop and you just wanna get the best that you can get right now and have it last forever, you're coming from an old 16 inch MacBook Pro that has an Intel processor or something even older, then definitely, the M2 Max MacBook Pro is going to be a fantastic machine. Anyway, that's all I got comparing the M1 Max and the M2 Max MacBook Pros, 14 inch. If you have any questions about them, let me know below. Now, if you're more interested in seeing a comparison of the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro compared to the base model M2 MacBook Air, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.